Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today's video, we're gonna do our Walt Disney World top threes. A few other people have already done this video. I think Team Tracker did it years ago and I saw Brogan do it and I just thought it was a good video to do during this time since we all can't go to Disney but we can all plan and dream of Disney. These are questions I often get asked. What are my favorite, you know, restaurants to eat at? What are my favorite rides? What are my favorite resorts? So I just thought it'd be easy to put it all together in a top three video. And I just want to stipulate by saying these are just our favorites. It doesn't mean they're right. It doesn't mean they're wrong. It's just, this is what our preference is. Um, I brought Mickey along today just so we have another different point of view. In saying that though, we pretty much like a lot of the same yeah. things, which is probably why we often go to Disney together because yeah. it's just so easy because we literally like the same things, but we do differ in some instances. Some so she's the only one here willing to really do this as well. So that's also why she's here. The other thing is we've only sort of talked about things that we've done. So if we oh yeah, if we haven't done it, we can't include it. Yeah. So if we haven't eaten somewhere or, or if we stayed haven't somewhere, done like, a certain ride, yeah. like we can't include it in our list. So that's the other thing you have to keep in note is that yeah, it's only these are really just the things top things that we've that done, we've been able to do, and so. they're our favorite. Just want to stipulate everything that we are talking about are things that are currently happening at. Disney World. There's shows that happen at Disney World. Some might only be seasonal and happen at certain times, but we haven't mentioned anything that's closed down or no longer uh, you can no longer running. see because yeah. they just literally like Illuminations, for example, couldn't add that to the list because it's done. So yeah, yeah, it's gone. So I just want to stipulate these are all things that you can currently do at Walt Disney World if it was open. Yeah, but this is the thing <laughs> you can't you can currently, currently do. do them, but. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So starting off with, we're gonna go with our instead of just doing top three parks. Let's do top four. There's only four, four parks. Disney, like, like there's yeah. two water parks, but we're not really gonna include those. So we're just gonna name all four. Believe it or not, we have the exact same list. So I'm gonna let yeah. Mickey start off with number four. Number four for both of us is Animal Kingdom. Sorry, I Animal just, Kingdom fans. Yeah, I, I think it's just the whole animal thing just doesn't appeal to us. Like we have zoos in Australia. We have I don't know if we're just used to wildlife or something. I don't know. It's but for us, it's like. We're going all the way there. We'd rather do the other parks. Like, I don't know. It's so more unique. And I'm not saying Animal yeah. Kingdom isn't unique. That park is brilliantly themed. Yeah. It is It is amazing when you look into all the theming or whatnot. But just for us, even the rides that are there, none of them are, like, top priority. Like, if I didn't go to Animal Kingdom on a whole trip, I wouldn't be saddened oh, by I that. I do like the Pandora rides. But... I and dinosaur. But like, I literally wouldn't be sad if I didn't get to walk inside Animal Kingdom, yeah. but I got to go to the other three, I wouldn't be sad. That's like the one park that when we plan our trip, we end up only planning to go there. We only like do one day. One, maybe two days max in like two weeks. So you can sort of just tell that it's not our favorite park. If it was our favorite park, we would want to go there more and we don't. So. We don't. So that's pretty much why it ended up at the bottom. We yeah. don't go there. It is a brilliant park. I'm not taking it away from anybody who loves it. It's just not our favorite. So coming in at number three is Epcot, which some, some people might be surprised that Epcot's coming in at number three, but Hollywood Studios has upped its game. Uh, it also yeah. hosts a lot of my favorite rides, which we'll get into in the ride portion. Um, but Epcot, amazing park. You know, you have the whole world showcase to go walk around. You've got future, it's getting done up. It's gonna be amazing yeah. when it's finished. But that's why Epcot made our number three, just because the other two parks have a bit more for us that we enjoy. Yeah, I was saying that I feel like my list could change with Epcot. Like, it could be my number two after all of the changes happen. But for right now, especially with all this construction, but I'm really excited for all the new things coming to Epcot. So, coming at number, number two, two is... Hollywood Studios. Hollywood yeah. Studios. Hollywood Studios feels so complete now. Like, all the lands, you know, they've got Toy Story Land, Star Wars Land. Land. Mickey, we haven't been on Runaway World. The whole that's just Hollywood open. section. And yeah, it's just a really fun... It has so many great rides. It's just a, such a fun, like, park. And we love it at Christmas time as well. Oh I was surprised with how much... I thought Magic was just going to be, like, hands down the best. But when we saw the... Hollywood, Hollywood definitely is at Christmas yeah. time. It was just amazing. So yeah, we really love that park. It's yeah. our second favorite. We love the theming at Hollywood Studios um, at, at Christmas, but also just all the rides that are there. It literally yeah. has a lot of my favorite rides. So um, I can't not have this park be up there. Up there. Yeah. Like I just, yeah, it's, it's a great park and I feel like it's underrated. And coming at number one, obviously it's like... Magic Kingdom. Like 
the, and I know a lot of people, I know, it's not their favourite park, which is cool, but that is the most magical. That is the park when you walk in and you cry when you see the castle. I don't do that at any other park. I don't feel that excitement. I don't feel that magicalness. Like, I don't have that feeling at any other park but at Magic Kingdom. Yeah. Also, Magic Kingdom as a rides fan, so many rides. has the best fast pass yeah, system because there's no the tears. That town number one park. If you couldn't tell, if you watch my vlogs, you'll know we go there all the time. Yeah. And magic for us also is like if like if we start off our trip and we haven't been to magic on our first few days, sometimes we still don't feel like it still hasn't no. hit Not us at Disney. that we're at Disney World. No. But then once we go to Magic Kingdom, we see the castle and we walk down Main Street, yeah, like, it finally feels real. Like exactly. Yeah. So that's our top parks. Moving right along, we're gonna go to our top three rides. These rides can be at any of the parks. Um, and I'll start off with my number three, and that is Space Mountain at the Magic Kingdom. I get so excited to ride Space Mountain. We love Space Mountain. You know, Mountain. I think every time we're at Magic Kingdom, we nearly always have a fast pass yeah. for Space Mountain. <laughs> it's the ride, if there's no queue, we're 100% doing Space Mountain. Yeah. When we had four free fast passes, we did Space Mountain three times in a row. Yeah. So it, it just had to go up there. I think I love it because it's like a near-death experience. Uh, I literally feel like it, it's going to come off the track and I'm going to die. But I love that at the same time, so I don't know yeah. why I love feeling like I'm nearly going to die. But Space Mountain's my number three. What's yours? So my number three is the People Mover. I just love doing the People love Mover. The people it's mover. usually, like, I'm going to say usually because there can be times when it's really busy that it gets away. But usually you can just sort of walk, like, if you don't know what to do, like, just wait. go on the People Mover. Yeah. And it is a long ride, but it's just so enjoyable. It's like good you can sitting just, ride. Yeah, relax. We can just go around Tomorrowland, the People Mover. You get to go through Space Mountain, which is one of our favorite rides. So we just love that. Yeah, that's yeah. my number three. We do it all the time. All the time. So number two, I just want to put out there, I think my number two could become my number one. Our number two is the same. We have the same as yeah. well. Um, yeah, I think it could become my number one. I haven't ridden it enough for it to overtake my yeah. number one. So number one still holds that spot in my heart. But I feel like it definitely could. And it is Rise of the Resistance. Yeah. We only did it once in our last trip because at that time you had to wake up at 4 a.m. Yeah. You literally, they opened the park beforehand and you had to get your fast passes. Like, you, they opened as soon as, like, the park opened. Whereas now, I'm fairly sure at the moment, it's currently closed. But how they were running at the moment was at 7 a.m. when park opened. That's when you can get it. Even if they let you into the yeah. park earlier. Whereas when we were going, it was as soon as, as, soon as you, you got into the park, the magic band, you, could you could get, get one. it. So, so you had to be you like had to be there at the front like, exactly yeah. so um whereas it doesn't matter anymore or it might change by the time it all reopens but yeah rise of the resistance is just the most mind-blowing ride mind yeah. i was so excited i could finally go on a star wars ride that didn't make me feel sick if you don't know i suffer from motion sickness mainly for screams um so simulators this does have a simulator portion did not make me feel ill at yeah, all it, it was, was too small it I was so too. smooth as well like it wasn't a jerky motion simulator and it happened so quick and the, because the rest of the ride I was moving, I was okay. I'm not saying everyone else will be okay. Everyone's motion sickness is, is completely different. But it was fine for me and I think that just like brings the ride up as well because like it's the first Star Wars ride yeah. I can do. And I like I'm not a massive Star Wars fan, but I appreciate the Star Wars universe, so it was just mind blowing. But this is her number two as well. Yeah, yeah it was resistant. So pretty much the same reasons. Such a good it ride. was just mind blowing. Like you just come off that ride and you just don't even I was know. In shock. Yeah, you just don't even know what to think. You're like, what did I just see? Like, was that actually real? Like, mm -hmm. it just it doesn't feel real. It's just crazy yeah. how good that they ride did was. a brilliant job. And if that is anything to go by, what future rides are going to be like? Yeah, we are in for a treat. I'm so excited. So come at number one. It's always my favorite. It's been my favorite since like day dot. <laughs> We are talking Tower of Terror. That is my number one ride. Do you know some people like you get motion sickness? It doesn't make me sick. Yeah. Don't know what it is. I think it's because I'm actually moving. I'm not staring at the screen. Like I'm physically dropping and lifting back up again. So I'm completely fine with it. So it's my favorite ride. I love how scary it is. Like I love I the, like the spooky theme. The cast like. members. They play it so well. I love when you get a cast member who's really into it. It just makes my day. That'd be the best job ever because you could sort of be mean to people, but like it's your job, yeah. so it's okay. Um, I would absolutely love it. I love the way it's themed. I love what the cast members wear. I love that every time it's almost a different ride. You don't know if it's going to go up, you don't know if yeah. it's going to go down, you don't know if it's going to go for longer. Like, you don't know. So it's it's just my favorite ride. So that's why Hollywood Studios also got my number two spot. You can see why yeah, now. Yeah, we love it. has my two, like, top two favorite rides. So 
Um, and for me, it's Space Mountain. I love Space Mountain. I always have. It's my favorite mountain. I would just go on it again and again. Like, if I could just stay on and they would just let me, I would just sit there all day and go, yeah. And that's what we did, like, our last... Actually, pretty much every trip we've been on, <laughs> we've been able to do Space Mountain so many times. And then going to the Christmas party last year and getting to do the Christmas overlay because we've never done yeah. Space Mountain with an overlay before. I do know they do on Halloween. We haven't done Halloween that. Halloween is complete darkness. But, yeah, they did a Christmas one. They had, like, Christmas so cool. lights flashing. We love Christmas, Christmas music. So... And, like, it was just... I already love Space Mountain, and that just, like, just blew me it. away. And, yeah, it's just such a fun ride. Yeah. So there you go. They're our top ride. You never have to ask again. Trust me, Tower of Terror has literally been my favorite ride since I started this channel. Yeah. So I think if you've been watching me for years, you should have already, you should have known that was coming. But Rise of the Resistance is catching up. So, ooh, Terror of Terror's in trouble. I still, I think I'll still always love it. Now we're gonna move along to shows. We're talking fireworks, parades, live theater shows. Um, predominantly, these are all in parks as well. So that's why I thought I'd keep it straight after the park section. Now, some of these we're talking about only happen at certain times of year, e.g. like Christmas and Halloween. My number three for favorite show or park is the Once Upon a Christmas Time Parade, which is only on during the Christmas season at the Christmas party or once all the Christmas parties are over. It does actually run through Magic Kingdom. I think it's but twice they do it a day. During the day, not at night. Yeah, but twice a day, yeah. like um I think between like Christmas and New Year's. In that in that section it's it's running every day. So you don't have to pay extra to go see it. Tip in case you're wondering, but I think what blew me away with this, I'm not a big parade person, and I'm going to say this though, if Paint the Night was at Walt Disney World, this would have, it would have 100% yeah. made my, I love that parade, but it's not, so it can't add into this list, so, um, yeah, what blew me away with this is the fact it, like, push it out smells, and yeah, you can smell so certain cool. things, and that just, I was just like, oh my god, like, what is happening, and, and just the choreography, like, everything about it. It's just a great parade. So that's my number three for shows. Um, my number three is, which it's only a limited time thing, but because it is still, well, was it, still running. It technically would be running. <laughs> yeah, I don't actually know if it will continue because yeah. it depends when the parks open up, but it's actually Epcot Forever. I know a lot of people actually didn't like it and they thought like Disney sort of, you know, cheapened out like on this which show, makes sense. Like, it was just a yeah, filler. it was just an interim show, so I understand. But I sort of went in having like, a, oh, it's gonna be nothing. Like I might see it once and that's it. But I actually really liked it. I, I like love it the much. old like music that they mm. use from Epcot, and yeah, and I just love the new things that they did, like the kites and the jet skis, and yeah, it was, I just really enjoyed it. I actually enjoyed it so much more than I thought. So I really enjoyed Epcot for Epcot. So that was my number three. So my number two, it's another Christmas thing. Yes. I I love Christmas. Don't hate me for it. I'm like, I'm a Christmas person. I'm gonna forget the name. She's probably gonna correct me. It's the Mickey's Christmas fireworks. What is that called? No, it's called Minnie's Mini. Wonderful Christmas Time. Minnie's Wonderful Christmas Time fireworks. It's a fireworks yeah. show that happens during the Christmas party. You have to pay for a party ticket to see it. But no, yeah, it's the same with I think closer to Christmas. You can see it without having a ticket to the yeah, party. So they party. do do the same yeah. thing when it gets into those days before Christmas they will show that at night instead of happily ever after. Yeah. So the reason why I loved it is because I am a sucker for Christmas. So it has a lot of my favorite Christmas music. It's not the most mind blowing fireworks show in your life. Disney's definitely done better, but the fact that I will want to keep seeing it again and again means it has to be one of my, my tops, right? If I want to keep seeing it, it has to be a favorite. And I think it's, it's literally the music for me. Mm -hmm. um, I love Christmas music. You know how some people say they listen to Christmas songs and it literally drives them insane? That is not me. And yes, I have worked retail. I just love Christmas um, and I love that fireworks. It literally makes me tear up at some parts. It's just, it's just a really nice show. My number two is the Once Upon a Christmas Time Parade, like yes. Alex said before, number three. So yeah, pretty much the same reason. It's just a really cool parade. I love seeing it. I've only seen it during the Christmas party, so that's at night when that happens. Mm, and it's and snowing and we've stuff. sat, yeah, in Main Street. So if you sit in Main Street, Main Street's snowing while the parade's on. It adds like an extra just, special Yeah, thing. it adds this and the smells, yeah, everything. It just, it feels like truly magical. Like it's a yeah. really cool parade, so yeah. That's my there you go. And my number one, if you didn't know, it's actually both our number ones. Yeah. But if you watch my vlogs and you don't know the <laughs> answer to this, at the fact that I pretty much demand to be in this park if this fireworks show is on and like I'll, you know, sacrifice other nights to go see other 
Park shows. Um, but it's Happily Ever After. I love that show. I'll be devastated. Like, I know people loved Wishes. I didn't see Wishes enough to appreciate it. You know, I saw Wishes twice in my lifetime. In 2012 and 2016, in 1997, when I went, I'm fairly sure it was a different fireworks show at that point. So, like, I didn't have that connection like um, some people did with Wishes, which is fair. Wishes had a connection with a lot of people. But this show just... Just it's just a, I still see new things every yeah. single time in the projections. Maybe they're adding new things and we don't know. I don't know. They could. They could easily add new projections at any time. But yeah. like I swear I see new things all the time. And it's just one of the... It's, it's like if you go to Disney and you like fireworks, like I love fireworks. You have to see this show. The other thing I really like about it is the choice of music because... They re they included like a lot of like not lesser known movies yeah like Hercules like, and and then from that movie Brave. it was like not the like for Frozen they didn't just pick Let It Go they picked Love Is an Open Door like one of the like songs that's sort of like underrated like people yeah. don't talk about as much so I I liked that they sort of appreciated those songs and added them in to the show so yeah the music is the other thing that yeah so happily ever after you have to see it if you've never seen it and you're planning a trip to Disney World. Put it on your list. It is yep. worth hanging around for. The good thing about it, you don't necessarily have to be close to the castle, but it's good to be close-ish to the castle to see the projections. But yeah. you could sort of be anywhere in that vicinity, and you're still gonna appreciate it. So it is. It's my, it's my favorite. It's my number one. Okay, now we're gonna move on to the great topic of food. I get uh. asked this so often. Ali, what are your favorite restaurants? Okay, this list could change. Like, yeah. very there are lots of places I haven't eaten at that I want to eat at, so 100% this list could change. But, as of today, my number three is Hoopty Do. I've done it twice. I think it is a fantastic thing to do it, like, for special occasions. You, or everyone has to do it once. I, like, I'm excited yeah. if we take new family to Disney. I'm 100% taking them to Hoopty Do. The food is great. Yes, it's expensive, but for what you get, it, I don't really think it is expensive. Yeah. Like, for the whole show you get, like, it, it's a and full if, production. If you're an adult, too, you can... I know, like, I don't particularly drink I a lot. I don't drink at all. Um, but if you did like drinking, like, beer, wine, and sangria, I think, is included. Included. And the food and drinks are unlimited. Yeah. So, you, if you, you know, you can make it worth it for the price. But, oh, yeah, the show you're getting is also what it's makes amazing. it cost. And it people. is the longest-running dinner show in America. Yes. Um, it is hilariously funny. Even, like, I've seen it twice. I can still watch videos at home, yeah. and I can still laugh at it. Like, I... Still think it holds up. You know, I think everybody has to go there once. Yeah, you have to at least I take it off the list. I don't think do you have to go every, every trip, trip, but yeah, unless you unless you love it that much, yeah. go every trip. <laughs> you do you. But there's another one that I have to do every trip, so it's so I have to do is my number three. What's yours? Okay, my number three table service restaurant is Garden Grill, but specifically for breakfast. We for haven't breakfast. done lunch or dinner, no. but I don't know if I would like a food at lunch or dinner. But anyway, breakfast. We went in 2018, so I've only done this place once, but I absolutely loved it. And mm -hmm. I don't know if it was the characters that also played a part in that. And I'm, we're not really that big on characters, not really. but it, it was just like I think it was also just the whole the whole morning that also made it magical because we got to go into Epcot before the park opened, so that made it special. And then we went to our reservation, and it was really quiet. There wasn't many people in the restaurant, so we got to see the characters like two or three times and the food was delicious the food was just so I don't like good. breakfast and I liked it so like it's also family style so you just they just bring the food to your table mm -hmm. and then if you want more they keep, keep bringing it to you it. it's one of those types of restaurants and yeah they have chips sticky bake is like oh if you love cinnamon scrolls you will she love does. chips sticky bake yeah and then the fruit they get like fresh from the land so it's really cool. So yeah, we I, well, I really enjoyed that breakfast. She's not I really. Did, a breakfast I'm not a big person. breakfast person, but it I was a, it was very good. But, um, so coming at number two for me, I like. It's weird. I sort of always forget about this place when I'm thinking about Disney food, but then I have literally eaten there. Made there 2016, 2018, and 2019, and it actually is brute food. It's Asian food. It's my favorite type. We're talking Tep and Edo. Um, or Tepin Edo, however you want to say it, which is over in the Japan Pavilion in Epcot. Amazing, amazing food. And once again, you sort of get dinner and a show or lunch and a show, whatever you're going to have. It's the same menu. But yeah, they cook it all in front of you and they do like a little 
show in front of you. And it's just real entertaining. The food is delicious. I so think good. like for what you get to, so like you pay like I pay like thirty something dollars because I get the steak. I get nihonbashi, which is steak and chicken. So they cook you like a little bit of steak, a little bit of chicken, but then you also get a salad beforehand. You get rice. You get noodles with vegetables, like, and for thirty dollars, I think it's one of the greatest values of yeah. of food. Like, that's like just all that. Not yeah. unlimited, but it's enough food. It's so like, much. You don't yeah. need anymore. It doesn't look like a whole heap, but it's actually just like the perfect amount of what you need, and it's yeah. like freshly cooked in front of you. Like, you see it getting yeah. cooked, and um, yeah, it's a it's a great restaurant. So yeah, we love everyone that. should definitely check that out, especially if you love Asian food. It's an experience. Alrighty, so my number two is Ohana. Ohana. Uh, at, at, at the Polynesian. No, at. Oh, sorry, dinner. Yeah. Dinner. We've never done breakfast. Yeah, we've never done breakfast. Really good menu. It's like all the food that we love like dumplings, chicken, Asian steak, inspired shrimp. food. Yeah, so, like, like I mean. noodles. Like, yeah, it's Ali, especially. Peanut sauce, sweet and sour sauce. Like, if the it's Asian pudding, food, you'll please Ali pretty much. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we love it there. We've gone. Like every like I think the first time was first 2017, 2017, but then every trip since then we've gone. We even went twice we went. in one trip <laughs> in 2018. We did. So like no that's regrets. how much we love it. It's just yeah. a really good. It's another family style. So same as Garden Grill, they so bring you just all the food to you. Keep asking for it, or keep coming. And yeah, you can keep eating as much as you want. You get like a salad. You get sort of like your appetizers, main food, and then a dessert as well so it's all included it is a bit expensive as well i think it's around 60 yeah. us dollars probably not as good a value as like hoop to do like hoop to do i think is 80 but then all your alcohol or well, the alcohol if you do drink that type of yeah. alcohol is included there's a show included whereas ohana you don't get that so it's literally you're just yeah. paying for the food and for the fact you're eating at the potly i guess yeah so ohana's my number one <laughs> can tell how excited i was getting when she was just talking about it um so yeah ohana the greatest restaurant. The only downside, and it's a, it is a big downside, but it, it's not enough for me to not go eat, to not go there. They do rush you. Um, a lot of people comment on this, the fact that they do sort of push the food through. In our last experience, though, the guy sort of forgot about us, which was good because we had a really big gap between eating the dinner yeah. and eating dessert. So it's sort of good that he forgot about us for a bit and he's like oh, I'm so sorry like I forgot you dessert but we actually got like a normal break that like normal restaurants give you yeah but they they do sort of push you out it's such a popular restaurant that and they want to try they, and they get overbook as many it. people pretty much they overbook it yeah is what they do they want to get as many people in as they can so they yeah overbook it and then they're trying they're to once trying you get to in get they in try now. to get you in and out and that sort of thing although like I said they rush you and a lot of people are gonna be like why would that be a number one it, I just still love the food. It's, yeah. I love the poly. And it's your if favorite you, resort. Yeah, so. if you get a view looking out, like if you got by the window and you get a view looking out the resort and out to Magic Kingdom, even better. Like I just, I know there's faults with this place, but I still love it. It's it's still my number one at this time. It yeah. is still my number one. So yeah, that's my number one, Ohana at the Polynesian Resort. And my number one, she's already talked about it. My number three. Number three is Hoop Dee Doo. I love Hoop Dee Doo. I don't think I've ever laughed as much as I have watching Hoop Dee Doo. Yeah, like, you I laugh am so much, hysterical. you literally, like, it hurts in Yeah, your it stomach. hurts. <laughs> I literally cry of laughter. Like, I'm just... It, my face goes red and I'm just <laughs> laughing. It's, I'm just having such a good time. And it's definitely my type of food. I love like that southern type, like fried chicken and the cornbread. Oh my god, I she could live off I cornbread. didn't know what cornbread was till I went to Hoopty. I think the Hoopty was the Hoopty first, was the time, first time, time I ever had cornbread. We I still remember and I'm probably gonna put up the video now. <laughs> we actually were so shocked that they were giving us cake. As like yeah, an we're like, oh, because it bread. tastes like cake, and we're like, this tastes like cake, like because it's so sweet. But we get yeah. it now, we get it. We've gone back, like, and the honey butter, and like, oh, it was just so good. So I <laughs> love the food there. Yeah, the entertainment's amazing, and it's also sort of like I love Fort Wilderness. So I love going out to Fort Wilderness, even if it's just for a little bit. So, even better at Christmas time we got four. Yes. Yeah. There are our top three, three table, service. table service restaurants. So in case you don't under, in case you don't know, table service means you actually sit down, you get waited on. Like a proper restaurant. In case you don't understand Disney terminology, but it's a restaurant. So now we're gonna do our top three quick service locations. So these are locations where it's like fast food. So you walk up, you order, you get given the food instantly, you go sit down, you're not waited on. That is what quick service is. So coming at number three for me is Blaze Pizza over at what, Disney our, Springs. Our list for this one 
Oh, it's no, nearly no. the same. Okay, sorry. I was going to say it's exactly nearly, the same. No, it's not. nearly the same. This is where like we like the same sort of food. <laughs> but it's actually surprising that it made... So well, it's your turn number three My well. number three is place pizza, um, yeah. I don't really like Italian food, so it's a bit shocking that this sort of made yeah. its way into my list, but with Blaze Pizza, I've, a lot of people explain it like this, and this is how we explained it to our parents yeah. when we went. It's like Subway for pizza, so yeah. you just choose your topping that you literally watch just them like make the it in front of you. With all the ingredients. Yeah, and you and just you go, just I want this, I want this, ones. I want this, and it's like 10 bucks, and they put it all yeah. on pizza, and you watch it get put and in the it's oven. it's pretty good sized pizza too, like it's fairly big. You can share. Yeah, you well, don't need don't one on your own. One on our own um, so. it, yeah, it's a big, and that yeah, that's why I love it, because you can just make it, you're not looking off a menu like, going oh well I like that pizza but I don't like that ingredient yeah. in that pizza like you can just pick what you want that's my biggest like gripe with pizzas like there's a I am a bit of a picky eater sometimes and there are a lot of pizzas I'm like well I don't like mushroom or I don't like olives or I don't like yeah. capsicum <laughs> and pizzas generally tend to have those things so I love this for that reason pizza has always been amazing yeah it's good no quality yeah, pizza good it's just really good pizza it's not like that sort of sometimes Disney have that like crappy pizza. you know crap yeah it's not like that. no it's, it's fresh pizza really this is nice. a from what I understand Americans can correct me if I'm wrong Blaze Pizza is like a food chain pizza around America. Yeah, it's not necessarily have... just in Disney areas. It's like a proper like restaurant chain. Like I believe. A franchise. Yeah, that's yeah. it. A franchise that is throughout America. So it's not just like a Disney restaurant. So yeah. you can sort of, I guess, you could get it anywhere. You don't have to go to Disney for it. So this is her yeah. number three as well. Blaze Pizza. So moving on to my number two. I actually forgot about this restaurant and then had to rearrange my list. Well, quick service place. Um, and it's Woody's Lunchbox over at Hollywood Studios and. There is legit one thing on this menu <laughs> that has made it my number two and you're gonna think I'm insane. You're gonna be like, there's so much other great food you could have picked from and you literally chose a place because of a grilled cheese sandwich. Yes, I did. I did indeed. I dream about that grilled cheese sandwich. I loved it so much. I was sitting there pretty much like praising it before eating it. A worker overheard me and come and get it. She gave us a free little pastry yeah, thing. Tarting. Just because I was so excited to eat a cheese yeah, sandwich. She could see how excited we were. Like, oh, I don't know how, like, I love cheese, like, melted cheese sandwiches. Like, it's just so good. There are other things, like the potato barrels we've tried, they're really they're good. Tachos, so. Tachos. Tachos. Yeah. Um, and it comes with tomato soup, like, well, you can oh, get yeah, it. Oh, yeah, we love the tomato soup. Like, it's like a thick, And they have really cool watery drinks soup. there, too. Yeah, we got that drink that one time. We haven't really had breakfast there. Really we wanted try to try, like, the though. s'mores one and something else in the menu. We've oh, we tried had the brisket sandwich. Had the brisket. That, was, that okay. was good. I just prefer the cheese. Oh, yeah. And my tip to you is the line is always long, but the line mobile for mobile order. order is not. So I send her to go look for a seat. I'll do the mobile order, go up on the side. So she walks around and finds a seat. By that time, like literally in five minutes, I've got my food and the people who I would have been behind haven't even made it to order yet. So mobile order at that place because a lot yeah. of people haven't caught on to mobile ordering yet. So that's my number two. My number two is Peko's Bill. Peko's Bill. Um, it's at, it's in Frontierland yes, at Magic it Kingdom. Yes, it and is. it's pretty much Mexican it inspired Mexican. food. So mm -hmm. I think you can get burgers and stuff there. But I, I think I they're even Mexican the burger thing, and Mexican though. type yeah. burgers. Yeah. But um, we mainly get the chicken burger platters. Oh, yeah. You mm. get so much food. You we share. You we get, share like, a lot of meals. That's yeah. why we like this. That's why we like the same things. <laughs> um, so they give you like the fajita bread mm -hmm. and then you get all your like filling stuff. They also have a condiment spa. So, so you, you get as much of that as you want. Extra condiments. The only thing is they <laughs> used to have guacamole free in the condiment spa. You now have to pay extra. So just so you know. She's what, a bit upset by that. I no, don't like guacamole. I just didn't know because it had changed. It used to be free and then it wasn't. So um, if you do want it, make sure you're Remember to order or it. Or just check the condiments bar first. Yeah. Maybe it could come they back. Bring it back. I don't know. No, if you love guac, because I know a lot of people do, order it when you order your food mm -hmm. because it wasn't. Yeah, we'll just check. But just a note. Um, but yeah, so you can get put guac on it, get all your other condiments. It's just really good Mexican food. You can get churros, like little churro bites. Oh, yeah, that's good yeah. too. It's just yeah. a good meal, good yeah. quick service in Magic King. It's actually we we don't find many good food places in Magic Kingdom so I think that's why we really like it because we're at that park so much and that's the place where we feel like has the best sort of quick service food. Best sort of food we like anyway. Yeah. We're not too like sometimes I can feel like a hot dog but I'm not into like a loaded hot dog or 
I get yeah. sick of burgers and nuggets, so like I want different things. Um, Pecos Bills is my number one. It's just because I've eaten there every time, like yeah. every year. It's just my even 2012 before we really knew anything about Disney. I remember we ate there. It yeah, it, it just never has, fails it you. Ne yeah, exactly. It hasn't apart from Mickey not having her guac last year. <laughs> It just has never failed us. The food has always been really good, like taste really good, and it's you know it's different from your usual burger or nuggets and stuff. And I think that's why we pick, you know why, like it's one of our favorites. So we always go there. It's a great time, good location, generally not too busy. You can usually always find a table. Like every time so we've been, huge. we found a table. Yes. Yeah. So there's lots of seating. indoor outdoor seating. Yeah. So yeah, Pecos Bills is my number one in Magic Kingdom. It's so good. And then my number one was her number two. Woody. So that's why our list was similar. My, yeah. Woody's lunchbox. I don't know. Just even our last 2018, but then even last year, I just found that we were going there so much and I really just loved it like this I just love all of that sort of because the whole theme of it is like eating the foods that you ate when you're a kid like those mm. sort of foods and I just love that it just never fails as well it's one of those ones the only downside to it is that it is outdoor seating but yeah. luckily it's never rained when we were there but yeah we've we always there. sort of been lucky to just stand around and happen to get a seat mm -hmm. and yet it hasn't been raining or anything like that so we've been quite lucky but yeah, the food's really good there, and it's probably my actually it is my go-to at Hollywood That's Studios my go now. To Hollywood. So though we haven't tried Docking Bay Seven, and we might like the food. Yeah, in we the, haven't tried yeah. the quick service at Star Wars. Yeah, then, so exactly, and like we haven't tried a lot of the food. And yeah, this is our problem because we just keep going back to the places that we love. We're like, why would I try somewhere well, we new this place when then. I can go to Woody Lunchbox? Like, yeah. hello. So yeah, that that's <laughs> that's our top three quick service locations. Okay, keeping with the food theme, we're gonna go with our top three snacks. Once again, we haven't tried every snack. There are many snacks. And I'm really sure bad. I, we forget we about snacks. We always want to try these really cool snacks, and then when I we literally get there. had a list on my phone and didn't eat a single one. <laughs> so coming at number three for me, just because I get it every year, usually at Hollywood Studios while waiting for Fantasmic. <laughs> um, they are the warm nuts. Doesn't matter if they're almonds. Doesn't matter if they're pecans. Pecans. Um, <laughs> pecans. Yeah. Um, warm nuts in general. Especially when you're there in the colder months. Yeah. So yeah. good. Like, so good. Like, they have this, like, sugar coating on them. Yeah, and they're, yeah. they're really sweet, but they're so addictive. Like, once you start, you can't stop. And, oh, my God, they're just... You can get them quite a few places, not just at Phantasmic. There's, like, oh, they're a lot everywhere. of the snack cards. That's just where we them. tend to get them. Like, we'll sit down, yeah. and then Mickey, like, she usually does a snack run at Phantasmic. So, yeah, she goes and runs and gets the snacks. And she's always just like, do you want your warm nuts? I'm like, yeah. Like, yeah. why do you even ask? Just buy the warm nuts. So my number three is the specialty ice creams that they do at Storybook Treats. So it's in Magic, um, Magic Kingdom in Fantasyland, sort of just across from the carousel. Yeah. Yeah, um, right directly across from Mine Train and near the carousel. You'll yeah. see all the little tables. It's there. The thing is, the ice cream changes all the time. Yes. But the two years in a row that I've been there and gotten the specialty like Christmas ice cream I've really enjoyed both of them so we yeah. had like a peppermint one one year and That's then we had a gingerbread one the other year and they were both like oh, amazing so ice creams yeah. we really enjoyed them so that was my number three so number two we both have the same number two and that is churros. churros love churros just another warm sugary treat like yeah. so not good for you but um you can't go past a uh, Delicious churro, especially when it has like red and green sprinkles on it. Yeah, it's Christmas. like Christmas themed. You're like, well, I have to get it now. Yeah, like it doesn't taste any different. It yeah. just has a little bit of sprinkles on it. Even like without sauce, just churros with just yeah. heaps of sugar. Yes. Mm. Oh, it's so especially like once again because the past two years, I had to think about that. We've gone in the cold months, and I think we're going to continue to go then because if you couldn't tell, we, we love, love Christmas. Christmas. So it's colder, so like churros are warm. Yeah. Thing. I feel like if we went summer more, we might be more inclined to pick like the ice creams and the or like drinks, drinks snacks. like cold drinks. But yeah. because we t are tending now to go in the colder months, this is why we're picking like the warm snacks. Yeah. So yeah, churros are both our no, both our number two. two. You can find them everywhere. So coming in number one for me, it is something that I just I've. I really struggled with snacks because I was like, my biggest yeah. problem is, I don't know what it is, it's fantastic for me actually, but um, I don't eat when I'm on holidays. I want to eat everything, but I sort of lose my appetite. And you can ask Mickey, I could probably nearly go the whole day without food and yeah. without even saying I'm hungry, which is 
really weird. Maybe it's even because we're just so like excited, like you know, adrenaline. I'm also like, pumping just, so, so much, much water. We wanna do I drink we water just like it's going out of fashion as well. It doesn't bother us though. Like. So I don't know. I don't know what it is, but yeah, I was trying to think like, what snacks do I eat? Because there's heaps I've wanted to try, but I've never actually been able to try them because I haven't felt hungry. I'm not gonna waste my time. I'm not gonna eat. But every year since 2017, I don't think I've gone 2016. Predominantly, you can find this in the confectionery store in Magic Kingdom, but I have seen it at many other locations but that's like the place that I've always just got it from and it's this giant hopefully I have like a video up for you can see this giant Mickey head chocolate chip cookie with like half of it's covered in like chocolate, chocolate. and then the other half is open oh it's such it's a good cookie. snack and, and it's like huge I usually just keep it in my bag and I'll just, just keep breaking it up over yeah. like a day or two or even, even three we days. take it back to the room and then I leave it on the desk and I just, just walk past and grab it and take some cookie yeah. it's just so good so that that has to be my number one snack because like I literally as soon as I see it I'm like oh my god I have to get it like I, just, I buy it like instantly you can yeah. ask Mickey if I see it I if I don't already have one on the go and it's a good snack to take photos of too it is a good snack to take photos of if you do yeah. like taking photos of your snacks. So that's my number one. Yeah. It's um, the Mickey head cookie. Can be found in a lot of places. So my number one, I, I'm i counting it as a snack. I'm not 100% sure if you can get use like a snack credit for it, but mm, yeah, I, don't know. I would consider it a snack. Anyway. You can only um, get this from one place. Yeah, can we just is, say there's only from one? From what I know, because I actually found out that you could buy this last year on our trip, so if you go to Fort Wilderness and you go to their quick service location, I think it's called P and J Southern Takeout. Yeah, it is. It's next to the Crockett Tavern, sort of near Hoop Doo. -doo. Um, you go in there, and I don't even think it was showing either, because they have like a little glass case of like cabinet, food. yeah, with food, and it wasn't showing. But I asked the lady, I was like, "Do you just sell loaves of cornbread?" I know you're gonna think this is weird. And you know, before I love cornbread from Hoop De Doo, and it's the same cornbread. And I was like, "Do you just sell like a loaf of cornbread?" And she's like, "Yeah, we sell those." And I was like, <laughs> "Oh my it. god!" So I bought a loaf of cornbread just for just myself. For her. Like yeah, I, I didn't told, want any. Yeah. I told everyone else, "Like if you want some, you gotta get your own." Because I'm buying a whole loaf <laughs> just You're for not me. Allowed my loaf. And I loved it. And like they're quite. It's the same. If you've been to Hoop De Doo, it's like the same it's size the same as one size. of the loaves like you get. Bag. They put it in like yeah. a plastic bag with a little yeah. tie, and they give you some butter and stuff like that. And, and so it like, was really good that we were staying in a DVC resort because we had yeah. a microwave, so she could like heat, I would it, up, heat it up a little bit and put and some put butter, butter on it. it. <laughs> yes, yeah, so, and it lasted a few days, so I would just like each day mm. have a little bit of that. But yeah, I love cornbread, and so the fact that I can now just get a loaf of cornbread. Yeah, like you do have to make it all the way over to Fort Wilderness, yeah. but if you're at Magic Kingdom, it's only boat right away. So we. We did that one night. <laughs> yeah, went a boat right over Fort Wilderness just for her to get a cornbread. <laughs> That's her favorite. They're our favorite snacks. Unconventional. I feel like you know most other people are going to be mentioning Dole Whips and popcorn and pretzels and ice like, cream bars. We're like, like nah, warm nuts. <laughs> yeah, warm nuts and a cookie. But they're our favorite. So that's just us. That's just us. Last one, because I know this video has gone for a while, but these are our top three resorts. Obviously, have to be resorts we, we have stayed stay. at because this list would be very different if we're talking about resorts that I want to stay yeah. at. <laughs> um, but these are resorts that we have stayed at. But I often get asked, like, where would you stay? So this is my answer. These are my top three. We have the exact we same, have the exact same list. list. And I just don't know if it's like because these are the last three resorts we have stayed at. That's why they're the top. But I don't know. Anyway, these no, are, these are our top three. So our number three is Old Key West. Loved that yeah. resort. So relaxing. So cute. The theming, like the pastel colors. Just yeah. Pretty, the boat ride to Disney relaxing. Springs. The we honestly didn't have many issues with transport there. No. Um, it didn't take like when you think Old Key West, you look at the map, you're like, wow, you're sort of far away from stuff. Honestly, like it 15 minutes to bad. Magic Kingdom, like Animal was the furthest away. We don't go to Animal that much, it's not yeah. that big of an issue for us. But it didn't feel like you were far away from everything. So, you know, you didn't feel disconnected no. from the parks. Um, it's just a brilliant, relaxed resort and quite affordable, especially if you're renting DVC points if you're a DVC owner, it's like the most really affordable resort of points. of points. Yeah. Yeah, it's just a It was just also the first resort. DVC resort we ever stayed at. Yeah. And yeah, we really enjoyed it there. It felt like there was no one else. Like, it's just so quiet. It felt like you weren't at Disney at all. Unlike yeah. every other resort, I've got that feeling I'm still at Disney, whereas here, I literally didn't feel like I was at Disney. Yeah. And I actually spent more time 
back at, at the, the resort. resort. Yeah. Um, which means obviously you have to like it if you're doing that. So yeah, yeah that was our number three. It was Old Key West. Coming at number two, which might be shocking to some people, we're going from a deluxe to a value. Yeah. But I would, I, this is the one sad thing I'm really sad about being a DVC member is I probably won't stay here again that yeah. much unless I'm paying like a cash trip. We just want a cheap, yeah. Um, and that's Pop Century. It is hands really down. I Century. honestly, like I could have put this as my number one. Yeah. And it's just, we had the best experience there. The rooms, the way they've renovated them, especially for two people. We stayed there for so 16 much nights rooms. in total. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we've literally lived there. And well, it feels like it. Yeah, the rooms are amazing. Yeah, you know, really good food court. You have Art of Animation just across the river. It's even better now because you've got the Skyliner. We didn't have yeah. that. The transport ran like clockwork when we were there. That was the best yeah, resort. The buses were great. That was the best resort I've ever stayed at for transport. As in, really cute at Christmas. Yeah, as in to and from the parks. I never waited that long for a bus, and they were constant. Even though the buses were full, you're not always going to get a seat. But they were like constant, constant, constant. Whereas yeah. I've stayed at other resorts where you're sitting there for like 45 minutes wondering, where's the bus? Yeah, no. <laughs> and I've done that at deluxe resorts. So I don't know what it is, but Pop Century. It's a popular, busy resort, but I think that plays in favor, like that helps you with the transportation. Yeah. You get a lot of buses sent to you because it's such a busy resort. But it doesn't feel so busy that you feel like. No. You're, like when you're walking around it doesn't feel that bad but nope. it is quite a big resort so yeah so um pop century that's our number two and coming at number one for me it's location the fact that it's very close to two theme parks yeah. um that's why it came in at number one for me um and that's, that's boardwalk the boardwalk yeah why is it your number one my number one, I think it was just because it was, it's probably the most like magical feeling. Like when I've walked into the lobby, like the lobby is just beautiful. It's really pretty. And I, I feel like at Christmas, Christmas has played a, a bit of a part in, like it's a bit biased, but even at Christmas it is pretty mm. as well. But yeah, we just, I just love the whole theme. It's like bright and colorful and bit weird. they have yeah. that, yeah, you like, you can just walk along the boardwalk and they have entertainment. They have that garden, which at Christmas time, was where like that green the big tree was grass yeah they had the tree mm -hmm. it has a pretty cool pool yeah so and i just loved our stay there it was we did have a really good room with an amazing balcony good location yeah <laughs> so we were blessed when we stayed there but yeah the, the boardwalk is an amazing amazing resort once again i think it's one of those resorts that doesn't get looked at it's a bit underrated yeah and yeah. um once again if you're a dvc member it's not that many points and if no. you're looking at renting dvc it's not that many points it is harder to get though, so if you're renting points, be on it at the 11th month mark. Yes, um, we standards, were, very We were on it get. and we already lost standard. We had <laughs> so to get garden view. We had to get a garden view. Um, it does sell out, so we it's going to be hard for us to probably ever stay there again because we don't own that resort. But, you know, we, we loved it. I think it's underrated. Like, everybody looks at Beach Club, across, you know, across the thing because of the pool. If you had kids that really love swimming, 100%, like, Beach Club. Yeah. But if you don't, like, there's still a pool at boardwalk you get the same so view really cool I actually preferred it better I don't know it sounds weird I prefer being at boardwalk and looking out to beach club because it just feels relaxing and everything compared to the view from beach club where you're looking at the boardwalk yeah I just liked that view better like I prefer looking at beach club than looking back at boardwalk everyone's own preference but that was just that was what I enjoyed so I think boardwalk people really need to look into it more it is a fantastic it is. Resort. You're walking distance to Epcot. Yes, you can walk to Hollywood Studios. And we did it quite a few times. Yeah, it helped us for Rise of the Resistance because we yeah. didn't have to catch an Uber or not. We got up at 4 a.m. and just waltzed on over. If you have kids, obviously you can catch the boat, but you're most likely to actually beat the boat by walking. Or if you really want, you could just go to the international entrance of Epcot. You don't have to go into Epcot, oh, yeah. but the Skyliner station is just out of there. So if you really didn't want to catch the bus, or well, actually no, they don't have buses. You have to catch a boat or walk, walk to Hollywood. Or Skyliner now. From, yeah, from um, the boardwalk. But yeah, you can catch the Skyliner to Caribbean Beach. And transfer then over. Transfer to the Hollywood. So you know take what? a bit longer. You'd but... actually probably still beat the boat. Yeah, sometimes. the boat is the a bit slow. The boat can be a bit slow. So yeah, that's there are our top three results. That's where I recommend people to stay. Like 100% if you're looking at value, you need to save money. It's Pop, Pop Century. Century. You can splurge a bit, look at renting DVC points and staying at... One of the, unless you can just afford to stay at deluxe resorts and like yeah, okay, yeah. do that as well. But um, <laughs> if you can't look at renting, because when we rented both Boardwalk and Old Key West, it actually worked out 
a little bit more expensive than having to stay at Pop Century for two weeks. So we pretty much paid yeah. value prices for deluxe resorts. Definitely look into that. So anyway, they're our top threes. I'm sorry for how long this video has gone for, but now you know where our heads are at. These are our favorite things. You would probably notice this from watching the vlogs. Yeah. So what we talk about, we like the same sort of things. That's why we go to Disney together. It just makes sense. We literally don't have to ask each other sometimes what you want to do. We just know. Yeah. We just both do the same thing. So it works really well. But yeah, they're our top three. So like I said, what we have said is not right. It is not wrong. These are our favourites. Um, you could have completely different opinions. Leave them down below. Let me know what your top threes are or at least like what your number ones are in each of the categories. So yeah, I'd be interested to know. But there's that video. I hope everyone's staying safe during this crazy time where we're all locked at home. Like, well, I'm, I'm still working. Um, safe at home is what you yeah. to say. Well, staying safe at home. You're also stuck at home. But hopefully, maybe watching this video has made your day a little bit better and hopefully you can start planning your next Disney trip. I know we're trying to plan a Disney trip. It's very hard at this time. Well, yeah, nobody knows when. Yeah. When we're gonna be a, pretty much it's sort of like, we know the restrictions are gonna be lifted eventually within our own country, but we don't know when our own country is gonna let us travel internationally. Again, yeah. that could be a very long time. So yeah, we don't know when we're gonna get back to Disney, but we can dream and we can plan and, and now do this sort of stuff. And we know we're going back. Yeah. It's just we so gotta figure out a good time to do it. Damn so. you, COVID-19. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I hope everyone's staying safe during this time and I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more Disney content. I currently have a Disney World vlog series coming out, so that should keep you entertained till at least, I think, August, I think, from what I have planned. I have that many vlogs. So yeah, I'll see you all in my next video whenever that will be. Bye guys. Bye.